All right, uh, today I'm going to walk you through a short activity, which is just a, a short introduction to all of the different rigid transformations. So the types of rigid transformations that we cover in this class, we talk about a translation, a reflection, and a rotation. And all of those transformations, they preserve the size and shape. So the figures end up being congruent. We are just altering the place and position uh, when we perform the transformation. All right, so what you need to start, we need to have two sheets of patty paper. So you have these in your tinker box. So both of them are five and a half inches by five and a half inches. It's really just a sheet of tracing paper that is cut into a perfect square. So here's a breakdown of my instructions. I'm gonna pull it away out of view in just a moment. But we're gonna start by folding the patty paper into four congruent squares. We're gonna label the four quadrants. We're gonna draw a triangle in quadrant four. We're gonna translate that triangle uh, into quadrant one. Then we're gonna reflect the image over the y-axis and then rotate that triangle into a new position um, in quadrant three, which is via a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Okay, so let me pull the instructions away, but you'll hear me talk about them from time to time. All right, so I'm gonna take each of my pieces of tracing paper and I'm gonna fold them over onto themselves both ways. Okay, so I'm making a crease here and then I'm going to fold it over again, just like so. And then I'm going to mark those creases with my pencil and ruler. So here and here. Okay, labeling the quadrants. Over here is quadrant one, here is quadrant two, here is quadrant three, and here is quadrant four. We usually show them with Roman numerals, so I'm keeping with that tradition. And now I need to do it with my second sheet. So again, I'm gonna fold it over onto itself. And then one more time. Okay, again, I'm going to darken those creases with my pencil. And I'm going to mark the quadrants. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so now we're gonna start by drawing a triangle, any triangle you want in quadrant four. So I'm gonna take my straight edge, I'm gonna draw one side like so, another side like so, and then my last side just like so. Okay, I'm gonna label my vertices. I'm gonna name it car, so C, A, and R. And then every step along the way, once I do it to one sheet, I'm gonna do it to the other sheet as well. So I'm gonna overlay my second sheet just like so. I wanna line it up. Okay, this looks good. And then I'm gonna put little dots here where those vertices are. And I'm gonna redraw that same triangle. All right, so here's triangle C, A, and R, right there. Okay, so I've drawn it originally, and then I've traced over it right here. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the light. I think it actually makes it look a little bit better. Okay, 
So now I want to do my translation. So with the sheet on top, I'm going to slide it down to right here. So I'm trying to translate that triangle into the first quadrant. So a, a translation means we're just sliding it, right? We slide it left, right, up, down, along a diagonal, right? That part doesn't matter, but we have to move all of our points the same distance in the same direction. So we're moving everything up so many units. Okay, so once I feel like I'm aligned pretty well, now I can go ahead and trace it. So again, I'm gonna mark those vertices. Okay, draw in the sides of the triangle. Okay, label the vertices C prime, A prime, and R prime. So the reason I'm giving it that prime notation is to denote that this is my first iteration, right? We've done a translation. We've moved this pre-image up. Here we've slid everything up, the same units in the same direction. All right, just to make sure my sheets are consistently matching, I'm just going to trace over it for my other sheet. So I'm just redrawing those vertices, and then I'm going to connect the dots. Okay, relabel that this is C prime, A prime, and R prime. So throughout this process, I'm just keeping my sheets identical. So they match. So again, here's our starting figure. We slid everything up, same unit, same direction. We know that the pathway that we are sliding, right, those pathways are running parallel. All right, so next I want to reflect. I wanna reflect over the y-axis. So this right here would be my y-axis. So I wanna reflect what I have in quadrant one. So triangle C prime, A prime, R prime. I wanna reflect it into quadrant two. So to do that, since I have two identical sheets, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip one upside down and slide it underneath just like so. And I keep lining up my axes just to make sure that I'm in the right spot. So here we go. So now I'm looking for those points. I'm gonna plot a point here, here, and here. So I'm reflecting over the y-axis, that's my mirror line. So here I have A double prime, this is gonna be C double prime, and this will be R double prime. But let me connect those dots as well. So here, here, And here. All right, so what we have is a perfect reflection over the y-axis. So this figure has reflected over the y-axis into this position. So what's happening, if I use my ruler just to show you, if I measure the distance to the y-axis, so here to here, so that looks like for me, how I drew my triangle, that looks like it's about a 2 point, we'll say 7 centimeters. It should be the same over here, so about 2.7 centimeters, okay? So we should see that it's the same distance, each point to the mirror line as it is right across it. And also, if I drew in this pathway, just to show you, let's say that I drew in this pathway. So if I connect the two A's, for example, my mirror line is ending up being the perpendicular bisector of this segment. So if I connect the two C's, the two R's, I will see a perpendicular pathway and that the mirror line is the perpendicular bisector of here, of that pathway that connects the two R's, the two C's, the two A's. Okay, so next I'm just gonna flip it back over. I'm gonna retrace it. Just again, I'm gonna have two identical papers when all is said and done. 
So A double prime, C double prime, R double prime. Okay, let me connect my dots. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to do is I want to rotate this triangle 90 degrees counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, we have to rotate around a point. So we can rotate clockwise, we can rotate counterclockwise. So are we following the clock to the right, right? Or are we going against the clock to the left? So if we're counterclockwise, we're going to the left. We're rotating just like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I want to be able to trace it, is I want to take the one that's in the background, okay, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm picturing here's the center of rotation, right where the origin is, and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. So it's going to look like this. Okay, and then I'm going to take my original paper, one of the two, and I'm going to line it up like this. Okay, and I'm going to retrace it so I can see the rotation. So here, my new point C triple prime will be right here. Okay, over here will be A triple prime. And then here will be R triple prime. Okay, and then let me connect my dots. So here. here and here. All right, so what we should see is the rotation. So we should see that point C, C double prime, is rotating into C triple prime's position. So just to point something out to you, let's say that I connect the C's back to the center of rotation. So here and here, for example, What I should be able to notice is that this length matches this length right here. The segments here and here are perfectly congruent, and I can see the right angle right in here, right? I know what a right angle looks like. That looks great. So each point is rotating the same degree measure, the same distance, around a center of rotation. I could even confirm that with my compass. Let's say that I took my compass and I opened it up to where point C is, for example. And I could do this with any of the three points. So here's my C double prime right there. So if I rotate my wrist, if I twist my wrist, I can see that it's moving that C double prime into C triple prime's location. Let me try to make that a little darker so you can see it better. Okay, so that's what's happening right here. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Okay, if I was rotating uh, with the clock, I would have rotated to the right instead. Okay, all that's left, I'm going to retrace right here, that last triangle. So I have a nice clean copy right here. So here is C triple prime. A triple prime, R triple prime, and then I'm going to connect my dots. All right, so here's what I have, right? This was our first figure, our first triangle. We translated it into quadrant one. So this was our first stage of what we were doing, okay? We took this triangle, we reflected it across here, the y-axis, into this new position here. And then we rotated this triangle into this position over here, okay? So that's all we need to do. Again, just a nice little intro to the three rigid transformations. So a translation, reflection, and a rotation. So last thing I'm going to do is just put my name on this. So I'm going to write Allison Crystal up at the top. 
Okay, if you want to color it, that's fine. If you want to leave it as is, that's fine also. Uh, this will go in your next homework packet. All right, have a good rest of your day.